Okay, hand cut dovetails. I just grabbed a couple pieces of popper here. And a uh, couple things you're going to want. You really want a nice scribe for laying your baseline. You really want, you want a good marking knife. Now, when I say that, you, you know, you can use an X-Acto knife, box cutter, anything. You just want a cut line. You want a good set of chisels. And you want them sharp. That's probably one of the biggest things is a good set of chisels and again, super sharp. The other thing you want is you want a really good dovetail saw. If you know, if you got to sit here and really hammer at it, that's just more room for error. So you want a good dovetail saw. Um, really, really important. Now, again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I want to show you some tricks. Um, because out here, all over the internet, everywhere, that there's all kind of tutorials on hand cutting dovetails and whatever. And again, like we said in the beginning of this, you know, there's all kind of debate whether you do pins first or tails first and on and on it goes. So, you know, I'm not even into that. I just want to get the dovetails cut. And there's all kind of things out here, how to lay them out and this and that. All I can show you is how I do it. I've got a piece of, just a piece of paper. This is the layout we're going to deal with right now. All I want is a piece of paper, basically the length of whatever it is I'm dovetailing. And you know there's a method out here, they're using calipers and they do all this and whatever. In this case we'll do a symmetrical. Fold it in half. Then, whatever I want my half pin to be, I fold the end over, in this case, about, not quite three-eighths, but a little more than five-sixteenths, whatever. Then I fold it in half again. Now again, it depends upon how many pins and how many tails you want. I open it up, and I'm perfectly laid out. And all I got to do now is lay this on here. Simply mark each one of the folds. And I'm um, symmetrically laid out. The other thing you're going to want, you want a good bevel gauge. And depending upon what degree you want, that's what you want to do. Now in this case, what we'll do is we'll just simply lay out our tails, I guess. So what we want to do is we're just going to come in here, put a little mark, One of the things I forgot to do here is I forgot to do my baseline. Do that. Now the baseline is the thickness of my wood. Again, I like to leave just about a 30 second or so over so that we can sand it and get it nice. All right. Now, that's one way of doing it. Keep going. Now I'm going to show you one of these. 
This is high dollar. This is expensive. This is a little bit of MDF. A few staples, screws, a little bit of glue, no matter. What I did, you can see what it is. All it is, the center piece of MDF matches the thickness of my wood. Okay? And you notice it's cut on an angle this way and this way to the angle I want. So I can go in here and I can do what I just did or I can just simply sit here and go zip, zip, Now here's the other cool thing about this little deal. You notice I'm pretty deep down here. One of the places guys, a lot of guys have problems is guiding that saw. Especially, you know, until you get used to it. on your saw. What it does is it also makes for a saw guide. Neat, clean, nice and straight. No big deal, right? Okay, then what we would want to do here, now it's time to clean out the center. Simply take your little coping saw, get down in here, make yourself a little spot there. Cut, don't try to cut. I, I've never been real good at cutting perfectly to the baseline. I see guys do it all the time. I've never been that good at it. So I always leave it. Then, another area I see people have issues with is being able to cut straight with a chisel. So let's do something. Let me grab a Now, a key to this is I usually like to go halfway on one side, halfway on the other side to finish it up. That way my cut is always kept clean because I'm shearing down. This also keeps you straight.
tweak it up anything you need to do and you're you got your your tail cut that didn't sound right did it that's all it is to it now let me tell you a little sneak trick if you just kind of sneak in here just a little bit not much and you do a back cut what am I talking about I'm talking about I'm cutting just a very very little slight I'm taking that tail and I mean very slight because I don't want to lose my glue surface I take that and I just kind of angle it in just a little bit why is that well what it does is when you pull this together it makes sure that this edge right here and this edge over here can really come tight makes your dovetails look really nice and tight okay there's that that's how I cut a tail all right so we're going to go off camera a minute and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these others out real quick so we got a full cut and uh, then we'll go come back and look at the pins okay I didn't bother filming it because it's too easy another little cheat on this instead of using the coping saw on the tails can you see this what I did was I simply took the band saw and just ran in a little bit to my close to my baseline to get rid of the worst of the waste now the other thing is the scribe line that we put in there that's why it's important for it to be a cut line because you can simply set your chisel in that cut line And you're done. Yeah. You know, just get your little relief in there. Okay. Let's see a little corner here ain't just right. Now, we have one other jig before we get to the pins. And if you notice something, the one we're using here to lay these pins out is angled this way and this way. So we can do left and we can do right. If you look at this one, it's cut completely backwards. Now here's why. When we get to this half pin, our issue is, is that we've got to be able to cut out here on the edge of this board. So we can't get, we, we just don't have any way to do it with this one. So this one comes in and it allows us to make our half pin. Got that? pin you can chisel it or just saw it I saw it, I saw them always just a little bit off of my 
scrub line. Then I just take a chisel and pare it. Make sure I got a nice clean cut. And we're good. Man, I see these guys out here doing these in three and a half minutes and whatever. I'm not that fast with them. But I've sure cut a lot of them. Okay. Now let's transfer this to what will be our pin jig or a pin board. Now, here's where you want a good marking knife because you want to be accurate. This is going to be a whole lot easier for me to do it like I do the others. I don't want to try to hold it and mark it too. Now, if you don't have a marking knife, just like we did in the other, take you a mechanical pencil, stand that lead out and go pretty easy. Draw them in. Just remember one thing, if you use a pencil, you always, always leave the line. Now, now comes our other jig, and that's our pin jig, and again, it's the same degree, but it's cut on different angles and all we do is set it right on that leave the line cut to it that's all you got to do go down through here do exactly what I just did then we're going to come back and look at cleaning out between them okay before I cut the last pin one of the things I want to show you you know as we get older you got to have glasses or you got bifocals or triple bifocals sometimes that little baseline that little scribe line is kind of hard to see if you'll just take your jig and make a mark, a pencil mark, to show you where you want to stop at, a whole lot easier. Okay, now, now we have to clean out between the pins. Now I want to explain something to you. When you're doing this, make very sure that you're working from the wide side of the dovetail. Because if you start cutting on the narrow part, you may not realize that next thing you know, you're cutting into the back of your pin. So I like to cut them from the back side. Again, we can go the same thing with the coping saw. And I really need 
a new blade, but it's alright. Get out of there. Now, if you're doing a really deep drawer, you can use a fret saw, simply deeper. And there you, now this, this blade's made for a little finer work. Kind of like a hand, um, what do you call it? I'll think of it. Scroll saw. Or, let's go with the bandsaw. Now, if you want to, one of the other, if you want to, one of the other things you can do is actually angle the bandsaw, and you can come in a little tighter on the pin. That's good enough. Scoot at my board. Don't want that. Now, if you don't have the hand strength to pair this, take a little mallet and tap it. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. And just, then we're gonna come from the other side, clean it up, and we'll be pretty good. Again, using this baseline, cut line, 
make sure you're in the right spot with your chisel. And just clean them out. Okay. I could do a little bit more cleaning here. But you're getting the point and the idea, I hope. Because I want to get to that other thing pretty quick. And the whole thing with this is just take some practice, a little bit of time, and you can do it. Okay, that's close enough. Because what I'm going to show you just in a minute, I think you're going to be like, say what? Forget all that hand stuff. Get it right. Get it right. Yeah. All right. And you got a set of dovetails. Close enough. Now, I want to show you something here because, and I know you, because this, this happens all the time to the best. See, we, got a, we, we undercut a pin here, undercut one there. What in the world would you do? That's very simple. Rip you a little piece. Let me do it. Let me cut a little piece of veneer on the table saw and I'll show you. Okay, so why would any idiot get on camera and cut dovetails looking that funky to show somebody how to cut a dovetail? Because I've taught enough dovetail classes and watched enough people, this is what happens. And they get aggravated and get frustrated. Very simple. I rip this just a piece of popper off the left side of the blade. Don't try to do something that thin between the fence. A little glue. When you sand that, it's gone. Because it's end grain to end grain. Works slick. Got one there just a little thinner. I ain't supposed to know how to do this, you know. I ain't gonna tell you how I know how to do it. Remember, this is woodworking 101. And whether you use a jig or whatever you use, mistakes happen. You take this and put a bunch of filler in it, it doesn't work out real well. All right. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit this with a sander, be right back and show it to you. Okay, little veneer, little sand, what do you think? Again, it's about getting you out of trouble. Because it's real easy to get in it. Again, I ain't gonna tell you how I know that. I just I've seen it happen, heard about it. <laughs> okay. Now I'll tell you what we're gonna do. 
we're going to take this same animal. I'm going to cut all that off. I'm going to lay out some dovetails exactly as we did. And we're going to do something a little different. You notice we're putting up, getting rid of a lot of tools here, huh? Okay. Let me cut this off. Now there's no glue in this. This, this doesn't have a drop. All right, I got to do some cutting. We'll see it plus. Works. Okay, let me get this cut real quick and we'll come right back. All right, wake up, set up, pay attention because we're about out of time again. But I really want this in here. I want to be done with dovetails. Here's what I've got. I've got a spiral cut bit. Now you can use a double fluted bit, it, you know, whatever you want. And this one's about a 5 16 I just grabbed a bit. This is a piece of quarter inch plywood attached to a piece of MDF, then attached to the miter gauge. Indexing off of my fence, I set it to the angle I want. Now the first thing I want you to pay attention to is that even though there's some grooves already cut in this, I'm going to make a fresh one. I want a fresh cut. So I'm simply going to run in. If you notice, when I laid my dovetails out, on this side, I've got the narrow part of the pin. And since I'm setting this way, the bit's going to be tracking like this. So I want to cut all of these, the ones angling this way. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this line, the outside line, and we're going to line it up right with the edge of this cut. I want you to be able to see this. Let me see what I can do here. I'm going to line this up just like this. Got it? Okay. You already got it, don't you? You already got it figured out. It ain't hard.
Okay. Now what we got to do is we have to go the other way. But we have to do... All right. Let me get set up here. Make sure I'm right. Get my other angle. Now, I'm going to have an issue here because when I make this cut, it's going to actually cut a V in here. So it's going to actually take out what I need for a pattern, my slot. So I need to move it. you understood what I just told you what would happen is if I come in here I'm going to cut this out and I'm not going to have an index I'm not going to have that little area I want to index on now this time I want to go to the other side this line right here to this side of the slot Baseline. You know what I was about to, guys, y'all ain't looking out for me. I was about to draw them in backwards. You see that? You do things like that when you get on the camera because you're trying to think ahead of yourself. That wouldn't have worked out real well. And we ain't got enough veneers to fix that one. Bandsaw. 
Okay, again guys, leave the line. You know, cutting those little pieces, I really need a zero insert in here. I don't want that chip going down and getting under my blade and breaking my blade. Okay, back to the chisels. Clean up the waste a little bit. And you know, honestly, from the time it's taken me to walk over to the, from the bandsaw over here, you've watched this in real time. Any questions? Again, a little sand, we're good. That's dovetails, guys. You can do it a whole lot of ways, but don't let them intimidate you, and don't be scared of them. Um, okay, next time, I think we need to hang some doors and start getting them wrapped up. We're getting close. See you next time.